What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome back for some more Fire Mom Heroes and this is gonna be my in-depth analysis and review of the new weapon refines for Air, Reed, Chomke, Legault, Adrift Camilla, Lu and Winter Ephraim. So I'll be going over the best builds that you can run on these units with these new refines for different game modes like Summoner Duels, Ether Raids, Arena and of course PvE. So with that said, let us begin with the free to play goddess of book 3. So Air gets the first Mythic Refine and also the Remix and Lithia Perk pretty much gets a hybrid refine that allows her to function as a mage tank and also a bit of a support unit. This new refine gives her plus 8 to all of her stats which is definitely really helpful because she's an older unit and she also gets the follow up negation and the guard effect always in the player phase. But if you want to get this in the enemy phase then she needs to have more speed than the opponent. She can also get bonus to her attack and resistance based on 20% of her HP which might seem really weird because she doesn't have the highest HP but still even a base air with 35 HP is able to get plus 7 attack and resistance during the combat which is definitely a much needed boost. And then finally she can heal up herself and the allies within 2 spaces for 7 HP after the combat. So she can basically function as a mage tank by stacking up the resistance with this weapon refine and also have a much much better damage output because getting plus 8 attack and then getting plus 7 attack from the other effect. And the fact that she can get guard is really helpful because air already is quite frail so she does not want to eat up like a special retaliation from an opponent so guard effect can definitely help you and even in situations like where you're facing off a dancer eldigan you generally do not want to charge up as bonfire so guard can definitely help you in many situations in ether raids offense and follow up negation can actually help her you know kill stuff like bramimon for example even in the enemy phase which was previously not possible. She also gets the remix and gets sparkling boost plus which now recovers 20 hp to the ally who has taken the most amount of damage and then she can also give any kind of ally who is above half health plus 5 resistance during the combat. So this is global plus 5 resistance which is extremely useful for tanking strategies like save ball teams and just getting extra resistance is really helpful in ether raids offense where you're going to be facing a lot of magical threats. So this kind of support is really superb and the fact that you can heal up 20 HP at start of every turn is also really helpful. Like I don't really use healing towers so this can actually be really helpful for just recovering HP to your tanks and then she also gets attack resistance unity as a remix skill. Which is a bit weird because she would definitely like to have attack speed unity but still this is at least a bit of an upgrade than to Sparrow where she can just take care of the debuffs even though she doesn't really get extra speed out of this. So overall the remix and refine of air is alright and it's decent. Um, I would say that remix is much better than the refine because sparkling boost plus is genuinely such a good support skill. Her weapon refine is on decent side, I wouldn't really say that it's completely impressive because I feel like it kind of misses the mark where they have not really committed going fully offensive or going fully supportive because the thing is that Lithia Perk was previously used offensively for setting up Wings of Mercy allies by utilizing the recall damage that it gave to air and you cannot really do that anymore with this weapon. So you just have to use like base Lithia Perk if you still want to do the air force scale force strategy. And then, you know, people just use Temari Dagger to get the attack and speed debuff. And this weapon doesn't really give you any kind of debuff of that kind. So it doesn't really go full route of being offensive to set up Wings of Mercy or just completely supporting your allies with like some debuffs or something like that. I would say that she is pretty much in the middle where she can take part in the combat whenever she needs to and can also heal up the HP by attacking the opponents um, because she does have that AoE healing. And her damage output is much, much better now. Now even though this weapon refine tries to make her more combat oriented, it's usually never really recommended to enemy phase with these kinds of mythics because they don't really get extra stats like the other units who are blessable. She can get extra stats in her bonus season but even then her HP and defense are really low to you know tank a lot of the ranged threats. So I pretty much see her as a unit that you can run with your safe teams. If you don't really have any kind of use of the speed debuff from Tamari, you can just use sabotage attack on Mila if you're running her and then Lithia Perk can pretty much give you that healing and Air can take out some of the opponents after the tanking phase. And she could be used uh, to collect the pots by using Disarm Trap and then she can tank some magical threats here and there because now she's definitely capable of doing that. So I pretty much see her as a hybrid type of unit and it pretty much depends on what kind of team you use her with. For me it doesn't really change much because I mainly use Gale Force strategies so I don't really use Sparkling Boost and I don't even use like Lithia Burke. I just use Timari 
And uh, for Gale Force teams, I don't really think much is going to be changing. But like I said, for save balls, you can definitely try and run this kind of air and get some offensive power. And for any kind of other tanking team, air can definitely help you. Um, when it comes to Gale Force strategies, she cannot really run that Air Force strategy. But I would say that there are just so many other better ways of setting up Gale Force now a lot more consistently, like with Winter Bernadetta, with Fury Sacred Seal running the Fury 10 builds. And then we also have units with Kanto like Yuri, who do have much better hit and run potential. And then there's Ninjalin who can pretty much do that same strategy. But if you really want to get the debuffs, then Temari is also available as an option. So now we just have, you know, Lithia Berg as a refine option, depending on which kind of team you run. This weapon refine is helpful in improving her offenses and making her into a mage tank. And I would say that the Sparkling Boost Plus is definitely much more of an insane upgrade because of its utility. So you can use different options depending on the team that you're running. And here is actually my most merged Light Mythic. I hope that I can plus and merge her soon, and let's go on to her builds. So on a budget, you can just run Blade Session um, just to get some offenses, because now Attack Res Unity doesn't really give you any kind of speed, and you can just run Reposition. This kind of air could just be used for in-game content, and then if you want to use her for Aether Raid's offense, but you can really commit with Disarm Trap Fodder, or if you don't really have that, then you can simply run a Link Skill and run her as a Smite Bot. This is pretty much what a lot of people have been using uh, air for for many years. So you can still do that and Sparkling Boost Plus is definitely going to be helpful as a utility. You can just run Speed Tactic or any kind of supportive Sacred Seal. You can also use her with save ball teams. Like I said before, she can definitely provide you that kind of offensive power and because she can run Disarm Trap from the Divine Code section, you can pretty much test out the traps and make sure that your tanks are safe. And Sparkling Boost Plus is going to be helpful with these kinds of tanks. So Distant Guard could be run so that your far safe tank can get a bit more bulk. You can still run her with Tamari and Sparkling Boost Plus is definitely a nice upgrade to this kind of full support build. Phantom Resistance is really good for improving your uh, debuff potential. And then Disarm Trap is just amazing utility in Aether Raid's offense. So this kind of full supportive air is still going to be run by many people. If you want to invest heavily into her, then Attack Speed Catch 4 is a really good option for maximizing her offenses. Now her offensive capabilities are much, much better, so you could definitely run something like this with Blade Session to just have a lot of offenses. She can take out a lot of bulky threats with this kind of build and offenses in between the combats or tanking. And then finally, if you do want to run her in Arena, then you can run Sea Duel Flying 4. She doesn't really score the highest here because of the 175 BST that you get from the dual skill on these mythics. But still, air is going to be a really, really good option for Arena if you do have her at plus 10. Because Sparkling Boost provides you free healing and also the fact that she's got better offenses. So now she can also heal up your allies with the AoE healing. So she can definitely be really good with a trace skill. And then you can just run a supported skill like Ground Orders so that you can have better mobility. Jamke gets a really solid weapon refine that kind of makes him play like he does in Genealogy. So I really appreciate that. So Boa Verdane does have minus one special cooldown and it also provides him with plus 10 attack and speed during the combat with both of his effects. And then finally he can get extra effects depending on the speed that he has got more than the opponent. So if he has got three or more speed than the opponent, he can get a guaranteed follow up. And if he has got seven or more speed than the opponent, then he not only gets guaranteed follow up attack, but also gets the Desperation effect. This weapon refine allows Jomke to function much, much better offensively because not only he can get high offenses, but now he can actually get the second attack in before the opponent can counter attack. And in many scenarios, this is going to be really helpful for even killing some of the bulkiest far save armor units. This refine frees him up from running null follow up in his slot B because you're going to be speed stacking on Jomke and you do get guaranteed follow up attack from your refine. So against most of the follow up negation units, you're going to be faster than them winning the speed check. And then because of the guaranteed follow up attack, you're still going to be able to pierce through their follow up negation. So, you know, against the opponents with follow up negation, he's still going to be able to double attack, which is definitely really, really good. Um, but the problem is that Jamke doesn't have the highest speed, so you definitely have to extensively speed stack on him, which means that he does appreciate the merges, dragon flowers, and everything because he is definitely one of the older units. But if you invest into him, then he definitely can become an offensive threat with this weapon refine, and he's no slouch even as a free to play Grail option. Like I said, you definitely want to invest a bit more into Jamke so that he can make use of his weapon refine and his speed stat. And plus speed IV is pretty much going to be his best IV here. 
because it is required for his weapon to function, so you can just run Susparo 3 and Lotspeed Defense. We did get Lotspeed Defense from New Orleans recently from the Ephemera Manuals, and I feel like this is pretty much his best sloppy skill because it allows him to ignore the visible buffs of the opponent on their speed stat, and it also just provides him with better offensive capability. Like I explained before, he doesn't really need not follow up, so I really prefer this. And then Speed Smoke could be run on Slotsy on budget, because again, that does go well with this weapon refine. He's gonna be functioning mainly in the player phase, so that's why Blade Session Sacred Seal is perfect on him. And if you wanna really invest into him heavily, then he could run Deadeye and Time Pulse. And Deadeye becomes a one turn special because of the minus one special cooldown of his weapon and Time Pulse. So if he's not facing an opponent with Guard, then he's gonna be using his Deadeye on his second follow up attack. So that just allows him to hit extremely hard, especially when you stack up the offenses with an ideal skill and Blade Session. Ideal skill can definitely work in Slot A because of his desperation that can still work at 100% HP. So he can maintain the full HP condition of the ideal skill without much of a trouble as long as he's outspeeding the opponents. And he can also be run with double life and death special spiral build. Now, to be fair, this build doesn't really do anything too new with this weapon refine, but still it's nice to have for clearing up the in-game content, the abyssal maps with three dancers, and jump kick could definitely be used with that kind of build. And jump kick can definitely be used in that way in PvE. You can also use Jomke in Arena and he's definitely going to be really strong there because buffs are really common so again Lulz skill is going to be giving you the dividends and then you can just run Time Pulse and Deadeye and Blade Session for improving his offenses. He can also be used as a colorless Uller basically. If you noticed, you know, Bow of Verdane pretty much makes him function similar to Uller but he's blessable and he's colorless and he doesn't really have the anti-guard which is a bit annoying but still he can be used to definitely smash a lot of really bulky far safe tanks because getting in your attack before they can even counter attack can really help you finish off a lot of the far safe tanks. Even if they have the guard effect, you can simply run Flashing Blade 4 and a slot so that you can still trigger Deadeye and kill them on the second hit most of the time. And the best thing is that Jomke isn't really as frail as Uller, so you don't really have to worry about him dying to some like lone attack. So that is really good, so you can function as a tank buster against many kinds of bulky teams. And you can also use him in Aetherite's defense, and this is where he can be really really threatening, especially on a Catria ball, because he gets the brave attacks with triangle attack, and uh, he can just quad attack before the enemy can even get a counter attack in if he's meeting the condition of his weapon. So this makes him really really scary because he can trigger Luna and do a ton of damage to even most of the common far safe tanks and I do prefer Luna on Aetherite's defense compared to Deadeye because you can get debuffed by Temari Dagger of Air, Sabotage Attack of Mila. So I don't really like the scaling of Deadeye on Aetherite's defense even though you know it can pierce through flames damage reduction and stuff. I do like Luna personally based on my experience. Still the option is up to you. And Flashing Blade 4 is a really good option in Aether Raids in general because, you know, you're going to be facing tanks here with special fighter like Brave Hector or, you know, Ascended Fee Arms with their steady postures. So having Flashing Blade 4 can help you still trigger your special after the time pulse and this can definitely help you in just closing out those matchups. And this kind of Flashing Blade Deadeye build could also be used in summoner duels because, again, you're going to be facing those kinds of same save tanks. So that's a fantastic option. Now, he definitely has some competition in terms of Young Innes, but Jomke, in my opinion, can still hold his own weight with this kind of weapon refine that makes him really good offensively. And he can bust a lot of the tanks, it's just that he needs a lot of investment to really salvage his speed for the modern standards. Legault gets a very nice weapon refine that makes him unique and interesting as a dagger merge project. So he still retains the cleaner effect into his Hurricane Dagger which allows him to get extra attack depending on the total visible buffs on the opponent and that can be really helpful in many of the game modes like Arena and Summoner Duels where buffs are quite common. And then he can get plus in attack and speed during the combat with this weapon refine. He also gets speed based damage reduction which can scale up to 30% and finally he gets 5 true damage per hit. So this weapon refine is definitely quite nice for a 3 star 4 star dagger unit and Legault can punish up buffed up opponents really hard because of the cleaner effect and he can also be deceptively bulky because of the damage reduction he gets. It's not often that we see ranged units with damage reduction and even less so in the 3 star 4 star summon pool. 
The 5 true damage can definitely help him with his damage output because he doesn't really have the highest attack stat, but it's worth noting that sometimes he can have lack of a fire power if the opponent does not have visible buffs. So generally speaking, this kind of cleaner effect is going to be not the most consistent thing because it depends on the enemy to have the buffs. And the enemies are not going to be always having the buffs. That is not something that he can control. So he's going to be having the lows where he doesn't really do too much damage. But his highs can be really destructive because if he's facing a buffed opponent like Legendary Marth or Brave Marth who's fully buffed, then his damage output is going to be so insanely good. Um, so you pretty much have to use him in the game modes where enemies are going to be having the visible buffs so that he can get most out of his weapon. So now let's take a look at some of the builds. So in my opinion, Null Follow Up is pretty much his best lobby skill because thanks to the damage reduction, he actually has the bulk to survive the counter attacks which means that he can, you know, utilize his speed productively. So you can just stop the auto follow-up attacks and also the follow-up negation effects, which is really, really good. And you can just run a double solo build because he can get the damage reduction even in the enemy phase. So the extra speed does help you scale off the damage reduction. So his solo skill does work out pretty fine if you don't want to invest too heavily. But I would say that Flashing Blade 4 is definitely a really good option for him from the Divine Code section. And Fallen Marita can also give you null follow-up at the same time. The reason being is that his damage output becomes even better now because Flashing Blade 4 also gives you true damage and this can pretty much allow you to get 10 true damage combining with his weapon which is definitely really solid. You can run specials like Luna or even Deadeye with this kind of build since you're using Flashing Blade 4 but still Flashing Blade 4 can help you against the opponents like you know Legendary Marth which we see a lot of times and many times he's just running some kind of unity skill so you can trigger the Moonbow on the second hit. And Slotzy is quite flexible with this build. You can definitely run Time Pulse if you have the resources, but I just have Attack Smoke as a budget option. So this kind of Legal build could be used in Summoner Duels. He's no Yuri, but still he can be useful in Book 3 and prior metagame, and can certainly be a really fun unit. You can also invest heavily into him with Lethality and Time Pulse. So Time Pulse can bring down Lethality's cooldown to 3, and if he's going to be facing any kind of opponent who can counter attack, and who doesn't have guard skill, then he can trigger Lethality in a single round of combat because of using Flashing Blade 4. So Lethality is not the easiest special to trigger, but still it could be an option on Legault with Time Pulse. You can also pretty much just copy Brave Marian's entire kit on him, and Unity skill is pretty nice on Legault because he wants to be fast, so even if he gets debuffed, he's not gonna get slowed down thanks to the Unity effect, and that can be really helpful to get the damage reduction and still be really, really fast. He can be a really nice unit in Arena with Sea Duel Infantry 4 uh, if you kill a Yuri for Time Pulse and that dual skill. And in Arena, people are going to be running a lot of visible buffs with the rally skills and such, so you can get a lot of firepower out of Legault and his weapon refine. And then finally, you can also use him in Aetherate's defense with a Bridal Catria. So she's available now on a Hero Fest, and a lot of people are going to be getting her, I feel like, um, who do want to run a Catria Ball team. And if you like Legault, then he could definitely be run in the Dark Season where Elamine is not going to be there. And you can basically run this kind of build so that he can get 40 true damage if he quad attacks. And he's going to be quad attacking because he's extremely fast. And he's going to be triggering Lethality on his final quad hit, even if the opponent has got some kind of guard effect. So this can be a really, really annoying build because of the sheer true damage that he can get out of Flashing Blade 4 and his weapon refine. Certainly a really, really fun option. A Drift Camilla gets a weapon refine that can capitalize on her high attack stat and now she can also provide support with the debuffs. So this weapon refine gives her massive 5 range AoE debuff that can debuff the opponent for minus 5 attack, speed and resistance. The description does say that modestly she can <laughs> affect the closest foes within 5 spaces and then any foes who are within 2 spaces of those foes. But trust me, the range is just so huge, she can affect so many opponents with these debuffs she can also inflict minus 4 debuff to all stats of the opponent during the combat with a much more lenient condition now. And then the refinery part does give her plus 5 attack and speed during the combat. And finally, 15% true damage based on her attack stat. So this could be considered like a mini draconic aura that does give her true damage and that can really help her in one-shotting opponents. And even if she's not able to kill the opponents in a single hit, she can still provide you with the support of her debuffs and support allies with Plagian weapons like Meal Morgan and broadly fan users like Ursula or Gantra. So she ends up being a really good unit who can hit really hard, have good one-shot potential and also support with the debuffs. And even though we have got Red Mage Flyers like Constance and Duo Pilot, with this weapon refine, Adrift Camilla is still able to stand out. 
So as for her builds, she doesn't really have too many options because of being a ranged flyer. And on a budget, you can simply run aerobatics so that it can have good synergy with the weapon refine and also the default bond skill that she has got. You can also use dead blow 3 on her so that she doesn't really have to rely on the bond skill. And you can just run defense tactic with her default attack res link to get some support. And because she's a flying unit, she can utilize ground orders or guidance to provide you even more support. But if you want to focus on her combat, then you can definitely sacrifice a happy to Camilla for attack res catch and also attack res far trace. So this can just allow her to stack up her resistance as well as stacking up her attack stat and she can actually get quite bulky on the magical side because of all of these attack debuffs. We are simply trying to stack up so that we can use that in both phases and a build like this could be used in summoner duels where you are going to be seeing some green threats like Brave Mikaya for example and even against many of the red threats you can just one shot them because of her high damage output. So this kind of build can help you with that and also provide the support with the debuffs which is definitely going to be annoying for the opponent. You can also use Sturdy Impact on her slot A and she can actually get up to like 40 defense because of the debuffs that she can provide with her weapon refine and the debuffs that we're stacking with the Fortre skill and the rain skill. So this can definitely help her in the physical matchups where she has to take a hit from some kind of distant counter opponent and uh, she can stop their follow up attacks and she's not going to be the fastest with blade session but still it can help you you know get to decent amount of speed to double some of the slower opponents especially with her weapon refine. But if you want to go all out, then you can just speed stack with attack speed catch 4, speed resistance far trace, and speed resistance rain. And then you can run blade session to get that plus 9 attack and speed. So this can pretty much make her rage 70 plus speed, especially at max investment. And again, you can run this kind of build at lower merges as well, that's definitely viable. But at higher investment, she's going to be having more HP and more bulk. So there are a lot more chances of her surviving the counter attack from the opponent and then just double them through her speed. And even though she's mainly going to be used with the purpose of one-shotting units, knowing that she can double so many opponents and also reduce the gap between the damage reduction skills by stacking up her speed is definitely really nice and definitely an option which I think you should do if you're trying to heavily invest into a Drift Camilla. And if you want to run her with R Duel Flying 4, that's an option for Arena because she is really good with those debuffs. And because of being a flying unit, she can help you with the mobility by using ground orders. Like I said, investing into her speed at higher investment is definitely something that you can do, even in Arena. Reed gets a weapon refine and a remix, and now he's a lot more bulky. So he still has his auto follow up and follow up negation if the opponent has any kind of penalty. But now he can actually get minus 10 attack and defense debuff with this weapon refine which makes him a lot more bulky and the final effect of this refine could be confusing but basically it's like a um, you know buff reversal it's like an in combat panic which can debuff the opponent's attack and defense depending on the buffs that they have to their attack and defense so it could be annoying at times because not always your opponents are going to be having those buffs and that is not something that you can actually control on the opponent and freezing seal 2 is actually a really nice a remix where he can debuff the opponent with lowest resistance for minus 7 attack and defense and also inflict them with the guard effect and any kind of foe within two spaces of that lowest resistance opponent is going to be getting debuffed as well. So the guard effect is definitely really nice from a long range and usually this is going to be targeting a lot of the offensive units who have a lot of offenses but not that much resistance you know maybe double life and death theory and stuff like that those are going to be the type of units that are mainly going to be hit by this freezing seal. And then the nearby foes are also going to be getting affected. So the guard effect is definitely really nice for his longevity and just as a support option. With this weapon refine, Reed can be a lot more tanky now because of the attack debuffs and have a better damage output and also provide better support with freezing seal. But still he has got a lot of issues as a mixed face cavalier. There's also a lot of competition to be had from the likes of Legendary Sigurd, Blazing Dorindal Elliewood, Legendary Erika, and Regin, and so many other, you know, Sword Cavaliers who are also really strong in their roles. And Reed can also function as a stocky mixed face cavalier, but his remix and refine are not really as insane as his sister Gantras and how much things it did for her. So in that scale, but still, it's a solid upgrade. So if you want to use him uh, on a budget, then you can just run, reposition, and have some kind of solo secret seal. You do get attack defense menace from the remix as well, which, you know, does get a bit redundant with his slot B, but still it's nice to have to buff him up. And he can also be used as a budget gale force cavalier by having death blow and slot A and heavy blade secret seal. 
So the attack debuffs that he gets can definitely help you trigger Heavy Blade, which is usually not that easy to do. And then you can also get the visible debuffs with the Menace skill. You can also use him in summoner duels with uh, a melee focused build with attack defense catch and attack defense solo. So this is just going to be focusing on his defense and that can definitely help you in the melee matchups a ton because you can get really really bulky with these skills and the debuffs of his weapon. And it can be really annoying for the opponent if they do not have a proper null follow up unit or some kind of blue unit who can take out trade because his follow up negation is going to be really good and then he can also have so much defense. You can also use him in Arena at max investment with Ardual Cavalry 4 and he can actually score as a 180 BST unit because of having Freezing Seal in his slot B. So it's a 300 SP slot B skill and you can just run 300 SP slot C and the dual skill to score higher than the other older legendary units and he can function with a Gale Force build again because of the attack debuffs. In the win season, we do have Legendary Seagard who is pretty much going to be a better Sword Cavalier but still Reed can provide you with the debuffs of Freezing Seal and he's available on the Remix banners so if you're trying to merge him up then that's an option. You can also use him at max investment with Distant Stance so that he can get even more resistance out of the Distant Counter skill and Mystic Boost can be pretty nice for getting some healing and also disabling the Wrathful Staff of any Staff unit. In Summoner Duels and Arena, he's going to be facing many units who are going to be buffed up for their attack and defense and there his Weapon Refines condition can definitely help him get even more debuffs on them and he can also be used in Aetherate's defense finally where you can again abuse the buffs that the opponents are going to be having and he can just use his auto follow up and the follow up negation to be really annoying along with the guard effect that he can inflict with his Freezing Seal. So with this kind of build, the idea is to again stack up his defense so that he can survive the near safe tanks with the follow up negation and then inflict them with fatal smoke and hopefully their entire team. And then the guard effect, if they're hit with that, that is not going to be too nice. Triandra can also provide you the guard effect in the dark season, but she could often get isolated by Mila. So Reed can be useful with his freezing seal to just pressurize the opponent and getting the fatal smoke on those kinds of tanky units is definitely going to be helpful. Winter Ephraim gets a complete overhaul to his Weapon Refine and now he's a lot more enemy phase focused. So with this Weapon Refine he can get plus 4 to all of his stats during the combat with a much more lenient condition and now he can enjoy this even when he's not solo as long as the opponent is above 75% HP. He can also get 7 HP healing after the combat and he can get minus 5 attack and defense debuff on the opponent during the combat. So this can all help him be a lot more bulky. And then we have the main effect of his weapon refine, which is the fact that in the enemy phase, if he has got more attack than the opponent, then he can actually get the brave hits in the enemy phase. So that pretty much makes him like a blue Arden in a sense. Even though he doesn't really have the high HP of Arden or that kind of defense, having the brave hits is extremely good because if you're going to be facing opponents with sturdy impact or follow up negation or really anything, there's not much they can do to deny your brave hits um, as long as Ephraim has got more attack than them and that could be really fatal for them because he does get minus one special cooldown from his weapon so he can easily abuse high cooldown specials like Ignis by running the steady breath sacred seal and the brave hits can ensure that he hits the special on his second brave hit and that can be really devastating for the opponent with this kind of brave effect and his high attack stat and the self healing is really nice for any kind of tank so now Winter Ephraim becomes a really really solid near save unit and he can actually even use far save as you'll see later on in the build section. So most armor units nowadays are used for enemy phase with the save skills and now Winter Ephraim has pretty much gone into that archetype. If you want to use him on budget and you don't really have a save skill to give to him then he can simply run sturdy stance 2, a link skill and steady breath because again he's going to be focusing on the enemy phase so that he can get those brave hits. His brave hits are not available for the player phase so again you have to focus on his enemy phase and he can retaliate back with his Ignis which can still do a lot of damage even at unmerged. And if you want to properly invest into him then a near save skill is going to be the perfect option for his slot C. So this is an Aetherate's offense build that he can run and uh, he can pretty much be a blue Arden again and just run attack defense unity and a slot A. Having more attack than the opponent is extremely important. And if you get debuffed on your attack stat, you don't really want that to prevent you from doing your brave hits. So that's why the unity skill is really helpful here for combating those kinds of attack debuffs. And Crafty Fighter can provide you with the guard effect. Um, we're not really using this so much for the follow-ups because Ephraim still hits extremely hard with his high attack and his Ignis. But the guard effect is really nice so that the enemy can only charge up their specials. 
and with steady breath and ignis he's gonna be able to trigger ignis on his brave hit um so that is gonna be doing a lot of damage pretty similar concept to steady breath arden if you have used that and uh he can also run a sturdy and slick fighter build so again slick fighter is here to deal with the debuffs you need some kind of skill to you know deal with that either the unity skill or the slick fighter slick fighter is definitely harder to get and he can run sturdy stance 3 and the slot a so that he can get extra attack and also the guard effect so his slot a options are pretty limited i would say the unity skill sturdy stance ideal skill or form skill are gonna be the main options and then for the slot b you just want to run something that can give you the guard effect or the debuff neutralization and then if you want to use him in arena if you do have him at plus 10 merge then you could use him with this kind of build um, attack defense ideal is actually an option which i just wanted to showcase it doesn't really give you any kind of extra effect like the stand skill or the unity skill but still you know it's an option to maximize his attack and at higher investments you can certainly run a hardy fighter build so he can function with far save as well because he actually has more resistance than arden and even arden can run a build like this honestly because of his high hp so this pretty much allows you to get the um ages damage reduction with hardy fighter and then on the second hit if the enemy is like a ninja corin or winter lysithia or reinhardt or something like that then deflect magic is going to be giving you the 80 percent damage reduction so he can be extremely extremely stocky even against like a green unit like ninja corin who's going to be highly merged many times so this kind of build can definitely be used in summoner duels where ranged threats are going to be really common. So you can deal with stuff like Lethality Yuri, for example, by having Aegis. And because of his brave hits, he's going to be able to do massive damage to those kinds of offensive threats who are not going to be that bulky most of the time. So the brave hits are going to be helping you tremendously with this kind of far save build that not only discourages the interaction with them because of his high damage reduction and bulk, but also because of his lethality with his high attack stat and the brave hits. You can also run a lower investment build with Pavis and near save, but I feel like the near save builds do fine with the Ignis and steady breath. Um, but when you're running the far save build, then there are going to be a lot nastier range threats like Yuri, Ninja Corin, and stuff like that, for which the Hardy Fighter and Aegis combo can really save you many times against those magical threats. The final unit for this weapon refined batch is going to be Lu. So he gets a weapon refine which can give him a lot of stats. So with this weapon refine he can get plus 8 to all of his stats during the combat. And then he can also self buff himself and the allies within 2 spaces for plus 6 defense and resistance. So this is kind of similar to with everyone of Legendary Tiki. And that can help him with the secondary effect of his weapon refine. Which uses 60% of his visible buff to his defense and resistance for inflicting attack and resistance debuff on the opponent during the combat. So for example, he buffs himself up for plus 6 defense and resistance and using that he can basically inflict minus 7 attack and resistance debuff on the opponent most of the time. So collectively with all of the effects, he can basically become a big stat ball by getting plus 15 attack, defense and resistance. But unfortunately, he doesn't really get any kind of unique effect which can help him in combat or help him stand out. You know, having more stats is definitely nice, but stats are not always everything in Fire Emblem Heroes. You definitely need some effects to stand out and be really obnoxious. And there are a lot of potent green mages who do have those kinds of effects. Uh, you know, Legendary Male Violet, Young Merrick, even Lewin, who is an older unit who got a fantastic weapon refine. So that's pretty much what I mean. Um, so he's definitely much more viable now, but he's not going to be standing out that much in the long run, I feel like. Um, and as it is, it is harder to get him because he's not a 3-star, 4-star unit. And it's even harder to merge him up because he is a 4-star special rate unit. So if you want to build him up on a budget, then you can just run Attack Tactic as a slotty skill and make him into a buff bot because he's going to be buffing up 3 of your stats. And this could be useful in something like Limited Hero Battles of Binding Blade. And unfortunately, his Rally Up Resistance is pretty much outdated and denied because of his weapon refine because he can just buff up the resistance as it is so the good old fury desperation build can work on a budget and because he can buff himself up with pretty much all of the stats by using attack speed oath you can run bonus doubler so that you can even amplify that um but if you face dalol effect or panic skills or lull skills that is going to be annoying for sure and because he gets the buffs and he can debuff the opponent's attack even further, he can certainly run null follow-up to make sure that he can deny the follow-up negation of the opponents and also the auto follow-ups. 
Because he can buff himself up, it's pretty easy to activate the ideal skill condition here. So he can get plus 9 attack and speed with that kind of slotty skill. And old skill is also really useful here to just buff him up completely. If you want to invest heavily into him, then attack speed menace is basically going to be a better option than the old skill because here you're going to be debuffing the opponent as well and then completely buffing up Lu himself. So attack speed unity could be helpful just so that he can have a way of dealing with the debuffs. And at max investment, you can certainly run close reversal because at that kind of investment, he's going to be getting really, really bulky, especially with all of the merges, summoner support and everything. So something like this could be done if you're a huge Lu fan. And he could also be run in Arena with G Duel Infantry 4 uh, with a different rally skill because he already buffs up resistance of the opponent through his weapon refine. Overall, this batch had interesting refines. Jomke and Winter Ephraim are definitely my favorite refines out of this batch. And uh, if you enjoyed, then make sure to share this video with your friends who are building up any of these units. And if you enjoyed, then make sure to leave a like and a comment. Helps me tremendously. And if you really, really enjoyed, you could always support me directly by using Super Thanks or by becoming a YouTube member. And for more Fae analysis videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because I wish YouTube sub boxes could also be healed up from Air's sparkling boost. So with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.